What's up, Bama Insider Nation? Trey Andy here for a first look at the freshman class as a whole. Before we get started with this video, guys, hit that like button for me. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so. And go to BamaInsider.com for all the latest coverage in Alabama football news. And hit us with a super thanks as a special way to tip the Bama Insider staff. We appreciate all of your support. This may have been the greatest class in the history of Alabama recruiting. Probably is the greatest class in the history of Alabama recruiting. The fact that you were able to bring in the number one and the number two offensive line recruits in the entire country when you have an offensive line, that's getting a major switch up for 2021. The fact that you were able to bring in the best wide receivers in the country and have guys like Christian Leary swing players like Ja'Cory Brooks and vice versa. This class was absolutely loaded. First player I want to talk about today, that man right there on your screen, Jalen Milrow, maybe the future quarterback of this program. Now, Jalen has practiced with the third string team to this point, but he has looked so good. And we knew coming into the program, he was going to have the talent, but we didn't know if he was going to be able to shape that raw athleticism into the player he hopes to become. We've already seen him make massive strides since he got to Alabama. Even since he's gotten to fall camp, we've seen him really in the spotlight, seen him get reps with different receivers, and he's looked really good. You look at the video here. Slinging the rock to Ja'Cory Brooks, to Christian Leary, and just looking so comfortable with it. He's going to be a very athletic player, a dual threat quarterback, the number one dual threat quarterback in the country, as you see here in the weightlifting video as well. He can pump some iron now. He is a strong kid. He's going to use that upper body strength to work on his arm and use the lower body strength to work on the run as well. Jalen Milrow is listed at third on the depth chart right now behind Paul Tyson. It's the backup and Bryce Young, the assumed starter, but he's learning from them and working well with Bill O'Brien and the rest of this group. Next up, we move to the core. So we take a look at the receivers, just gotta talk about Ajay Hall. He went crazy in that 8A game. Looked really good and was just a taste of what this core is going to be worth this season. And you look at these guys, Ja'Cory Brooks, Christian Leary, Ajay Hall like you just saw there, JoJo Earl, there's so many names to turn to in a receiving core that's gonna have a lot of opportunity. We had a video about this the other day. This receiving core is going to look a lot different. Obviously, you lose the Heisman winner, Devontae Smith. You lose some other pieces as well. Jalen Waddle to the NFL. But you bring back John Mechie. He can lead this group, along with Slade Bolden, leading all these young wide receivers. There's so much raw talent here. I mean, you look at it. Ja'Cory Brooks leads this group. He was a five-star. Ajay Hall, a four-star. The number five wide receiver in the country. JoJo Earl, the number six wide receiver in the country. A four-star as well. You go down the list, Christian Leary, four-star, JoJo Earl. All these guys are so talented. They're so young and have so much raw ability. I want to take this sec to talk about this group as a whole. It's fun to watch these wide receivers. They're going to be my favorite part of this young freshman class to watch in 2021. But as a whole, I mean, all major outlets had this class. Far and away the number one program, not just for that year, but look at a lot of major sites, articles, anything you can find on this class. It's pretty much widely regarded as the number one recruiting class in the history of recruiting. Now onto the running back, Kamar Wheaton, the number one running back recruit in the entire country. I feel like I'm saying that a lot about all these different positions, but that's just how crazy talented this class is. Kamar Wheaton is going to be a force. He's very shifty, another very athletic player. He's going to work on his strength a bit, kind of reminds me of a build of maybe a Roydell Williams right now. And they wear 23 and 25, so if you see him getting interchanged at all this season, it might be a bit confusing, but Kamar Wheaton, I think, will build some muscle and continue to get bigger, stronger, and better. Now, one player that has gotten a lot of people excited, Kool-Aid Jaquincy McKinstry. Out of the state of Alabama, I had a chance to see him play before he got to school in the state championship game this past year at Bryant-Denny Stadium, and I was immediately taken away. If you had the chance to see him in A-Day, you probably had the same feeling. He made an interception in that game, and throughout the entire spring, as he was an early enrollee, he looked unstoppable. He already looks like he's maybe a sophomore, a junior. Kind of has that Will Anderson feel from last year as far as the looks and the maturity goes. This kid is going to be able to play, maybe not right away, but he's going to get his chance this season, and a good bit of them. He's so athletic, obviously maybe a basketball player as well for this program, and it's just a really talented defensive back. He high points the football super well and uses his speed and size to leverage his receivers. I mean, the kid is truly a force and uses his athleticism with all of that 
considered to be that DB that Alabama hopes to have in 2021, a position group that's losing Patrick Sertain and is going to need some help this year. Josh Job will hold it down, but adding that youth, I think is going to mean a lot for those set of players as the season goes on. On to Dallas Turner, the edge rush. Dallas Turner is another one of these players that really makes you question what they're feeding them down there in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This kid is going to be a monster. Already listed at 6'4", 245. He was another one of the five stars coming out of this group. And in practice, we've seen it already. He is mentoring under Will Anderson. And we added a video earlier this week on another youngster that will play edge rush in the future for this team. Jeremiah Alexander out of Thompson has talked with Dallas Turner and Dallas told him, if there's a place to be at edge rush right now, it's Alabama. They have a new age mentality. Will Anderson is kind of a teacher along with a player for Dallas Turner. And I think Dallas Turner is going to follow right in his footsteps. Will Anderson is going to be a force this year and next season as well before he heads to the NFL. But Dallas Turner is going to get his chance too. And number 15 is going to light him up on the defensive side of the football. I could talk about this group for hours and hours. There's just so much talent and so many different types of players that are a lot of fun to watch. Now I mentioned the offensive line recruits a bit ago, but I want to go a little bit deeper on them. Starting with Tommy Brockermeyer. His father was a former NFL player. His brother was brought into the class as well, but he himself is a five-star recruit, was the number six overall player in the country, the number two offensive line recruit, and the number two player out of the state of Texas. Tommy Brockermeyer could have a chance to play right away. I think he'll at least see a decent amount of time this year, just kind of working into a young offensive line that will have a lot of opportunity around it. Now, I, I talked about Tommy Brockermeyer first and said he was the second offensive line recruit in the country. Well, who was number one? Alabama landed that guy too, J.C. Latham. Everybody is excited about J.C. Latham, myself included. He's just got so much athleticism with that kind of size. He was a five-star, listed at 6'6", 305 pounds. He was the number three player in the country. Like I said, the number one offensive line recruit in the country and the number one player in the state of Florida. On the defensive line coming in, you got Tim Keenan. This man's going to be an animal as well. Big dude out of Birmingham, an in-state kid that Alabama's been really excited about. Don't know if he's going to get the playing time right away, or maybe as quick as some of these dudes, but you're going to see him. He's going to use that size. This 2021 recruiting class couldn't have been any more loaded. It was everywhere. On the lines, the receiving core, the running back room, a new quarterback into town. This class was deadly. But Alabama didn't just bring in high school kids. They were able to work the transfer portal a little bit as well. Jamison Williams, coming over from Ohio State, has so much speed. Is going to be a burner. Maybe your deep route runner this year. He adds to this receiving core as well. So, you know, you're sitting there maybe thinking, we don't have Devontae Smith anymore. We don't have Jalen Waddell, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs. These are all guys of the past. But guess what? We do have a Ja'Cory Brooks now. We do have a Christian Leary. And not just that, but we have the veteran leadership of John Mechie. And now a transfer veteran as well in Jamison Williams. Another big transfer that will be added to the defense, Henry To'o To'o. This dude led his team in tackles at an SEC school, Tennessee, last year. He's done that for the past two seasons. And from what we've heard out of fall camp, he has already added so much to the linebacker. So disciplined and very technical with the way he plays and is making sure that his teammates are accountable. That's the one thing I love the most when I heard that. He works exclusively with Pete Golding and that inside linebacker group and is really doing a good job of helping his teammates get better too. Another big defender coming into the program as well, a JUCO transfer, the number one JUCO cornerback in the country, Kyrie Jackson. I think he's going to add a lot along with Henry Toto, some veteran experience. The final player we're going to talk about today, another youngster that will add to this defense, a four-star recruit out of Duncanville, Texas, Kendrick Blackshire, the number seven inside linebacker in the class, the number 122 player in the country. Guys, just look at him. This dude is going to be a monster. He's another one of these players that doesn't really look like he should be 17, 18 years old, a freshman in college. He looks like he's a veteran, and I think he's going to play like that too. And with the leadership of Toho Toho, some of these other inside linebackers, along with the mind of Pete Golding, who will be working with him exclusively in that inside linebacker group, I think he's going to be able to learn a lot, get to see some playing time pretty early on. Here what head coach Nick Saban had to say at yesterday's press conference on these youngsters, the transfers, and how he expects them to work into the lineup. Uh, there was a lot of good things out there, and there was a lot of mistakes, but that's that's probably you know, what you expect in the first scrimmage, especially for young players. Uh, we did have some of the young players who you know, made some plays out there today, which I think is you know, a real positive for them. Um, and, you know, we really haven't tried to establish, you know, depth charts. And I know that that's really something that's really important to you guys. 
Uh, but we're trying to give everybody an opportunity right now so that they do have a chance to uh, compete and play and uh, kind of see who responds the best uh, in difficult circumstances. Alabama is gearing up for another national championship run in 2021, and at times they're going to have to lean on these young players. But the Crimson Tide are in good hands. Bryce Young is at the helm with a great young receiving core, some young running backs that could get the chance, and young defenders that are looking to make a statement right away. For more information on these youngsters and all things Alabama football, go to BamaInsider.com. Hit the like button on our YouTube page, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and hit the super thanks button at the bottom of the video as a tip for the Bama Insider staff. For BamaInsider.com, my name is Trey Yannity. Without further ado, here's an extended look at the freshman class of 2021. Right, get out of it though. Right, get out of it. Push, 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 Thank you. 